Hi, my name is Jim, and about a year and a half ago, I totally redesigned the Langstroth Beehive. I made a whole video about it here, linked up above, and I call it the Bee Barn. This is version 1.0, and it's been a fabulous proof of concept for the last two seasons. The bees have done very well in these boxes, but the hive itself has had a few issues that have been bothering me that whole time. So I spent all of 2022 redesigning and rebuilding my hives. And it's finally time to share with you what I've come up with. This is version 2.0. And it may look similar on the outside, but wait till you see the changes on the inside. Before I start, I just want to thank you very much for your patience. I know it's been a long time since I uploaded a video here, and believe me, I've missed this more than you have. After I upload this video, the reveal intro video, I'm gonna be uploading a four part series on how I built my bee barns. This is a tutorial step-by-step, -step, as easy as I could make it, and it's gonna show you everything I did to build these hives. So stay tuned for that, please subscribe, and those are in the shoot. They're coming out in the next couple weeks. Now this video is gonna be a deep dive into the new hives. This is gonna be in three parts. The first part is gonna be what I kept from version one, the things that I didn't change about version one going into version two. The second part of the video is gonna be the stuff that I fixed, the stuff that was wrong with version one that I fixed in version two. And the third part of the video is the new stuff, the stuff I added and the stuff I think you're gonna to wanna to stick around for. Snap. And now we're inside. So it started raining out in the last part of the video here. So I brought everything inside. Now we're talking about bee barns inside of a barn. But anyway, this part of the video, I'm gonna tell you about what made it from the design of version one into version two. And actually just about everything worked from, from this design. So I kept it in version 2.0. What, what worked? Well, first of all, the bees came out of last winter this past spring in 22, the winter of 21, 100% survival in these boxes over the winter. Every single hive in my bee yard survived last year and they came out really strong. Like almost no dead bees in the bottom board, almost no bees out front of the hive dead. Uh, there was brood in these boxes in early March, which I have never seen before. Usually I see brood in April Early March, there was capped brood in almost all of these hives, which means there were queens laying eggs in February in Massachusetts, outdoors, in these hives. So, smashing success. So the overall concept of what a bee barn is, is still in place in this hive. So what is a bee barn, actually? Let's just go back and start there. I have sort of four guiding principles of what these hives are. And you can make a hive that looks like these, and it would, it would be what I call a bee barn if it has these four elements to it. Number one, it has to be a super insulated box. That is a box with insulation on all four sides, top and bottom. So completely wrapped in insulation. That's sort of the first principle. Also, that insulation is year round. That is four season insulation. So that's part one. Part two, there are no upper vents or upper entrances at all any time of the year. So these hives are sealed shut at the tops year round. The only entrance in or out is the bottom here. That's where the bees ventilate and that's where they, they come in and out. So that's part two. Part three is they are deep boxes. So I use 
extra deep frames. These are Langstroth width frames, but I made them long so they fit into a deep and medium box. Deep comb, continuous comb, that's, that is no bars going across, no gaps between frames, that's continuous comb. The queens lay top to bottom on these frames, all the way down, 16 inches by 19 inches. Giant patterns of brood on these frames. So that's a third element. And then the fourth element is that these boxes have a dedicated brood box, which is the bottom box, that's this box. And then they are supered above. So these are vertically oriented, not like a horizontal hive or a layens hive, which, which aren't supered. I believe that bees need to move up and down in the hive, especially during winter to get to resources. So I, I don't think they do well going across hives on a horizontal hive, but vertically through comb is a much more natural way for the bees to move. Think of a tree, a big tall tree with a, with a hollow cavity on the inside. It's gonna be tall and narrow. It's gonna have only one entrance usually at the bottom and it's gonna be filled with long tall comb and it's, it's insulated on all four sides. So a nice big thick tree insulation above and below and that's what sort of the model is for these hives. Now, before I move on, let me just address two things that I just spoke about that I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments on that I've been talking about for years. Uh, that is insulation and ventilation. Now, I've learned over the years through all kinds of experimentation that insulation works. Insulation is good for bees. And especially when I committed a year and two, two years ago now, to full insulation, that is all sides, top and bottom, insulated on the hives. After I did that and I watched the thermometers in the hives that I keep inside the hives, I learned that, that that is a good thing for the bees. You need to commit though. You can't just insulate part of the hive. You can't just put insulation on top and leave the sides and the bottom wide open. You can't just put insulation on the walls and leave the top open. If you're gonna insulate, you gotta wrap the whole thing. Bees really like a controlled environment. They want everything to be stable and not with wild temperature swings all the time inside these boxes. They need to keep the, the temperature and humidity at a perfect temperature for brood rearing. And when things get too hot, they have to cool the hive. When things are too cold, they have to heat the hive. If there's too much humidity, they gotta get that humidity out of the hive. But if they have a stable environment that isn't really getting affected by the sun and the wind and the snow and the cold and the temperature swings outside, when things are stable, they're happy and the queen lays more eggs and the bees have to do less work to maintain the temperature and humidity. So that means more bees are going out foraging and more bees are taking care of brood. So insulation is a good thing if you do it all the way around the hive and leave it on year round. Don't be afraid to do that. I've been doing it and my bees are completely fine. Now, ventilation is a very controversial topic. And I've seen a lot of videos on the internet, a lot of opinions out there about ventilation. And I gotta say that if you insulate your hives, if you do have full insulation, now this is the key, it has to be full insulation. If you have insulation on top, sides, and it's sealed tight, you do not need to ventilate your hive. It is unnecessary. The bees need an opening so they can get air in and out but they don't need ventilation at the top. They don't want a chimney effect. They don't want air blown through their hive. They don't want bottom boards open. They want everything tight. They do the ventilation. They handle it with just one opening. I've been doing it for two years. I've been monitoring temperature and humidity in the hives and it works. They, the bees know how to move air and they can move it out of one hole in the bottom of the hive. If you are one of those beekeepers that just puts a little insulation on the, on the roof, uh, but leaves bottom boards wide open or doesn't insulate the sides, then you do need a way for moisture to get out of your hive. The bees need a little help there because you're gonna get condensation all over the hive if you don't fully insulate. So this is the key. With full insulation, you do not need ventilation. With these kind of hives, you do not need ventilation. Now, all that being said, I did have a moisture problem in this hive. Now, the moisture wasn't a problem for the bees. The bees handled it fine, but the moisture was not good for the hive. It made everything wet. It made all the wood swell up. 
and I eliminated this problem in version 2.0. So let's talk about the changes I made with an overhead shot. So what didn't make it over from version one to version two? Well, it all goes back to the problems I had with my first design. So as you know, we have a Coroplast cover, a standard Langstroth outer cover. This is the insulation, venting, and feeding box. And when I made this, my intention was to have this open for ventilation if the bees needed it in the summertime. Turns out I never used this for venting. It was not necessary. I did use this for feeding, and I also used it as an insulation box. I, put, I packed this filled with insulation to keep the heat down underneath the inner cover over the winter time. But I did not use this for venting, and this did not make it into the design of version two. And this is the inner cover. I tried to make this a high-tech thing. It's made out of half-inch plywood. It's super solid. It has these vents here. There's one, two, three holes in here with these dials. And you can open these up for putting a pail feeder on top here or a pollen patty so the bees can come up over the, the inner cover here. It also has an option for venting, which I never used. And the reason I didn't use it is because I also had a permanent vent in the middle. This hole here is cut out and I put hardware cloth here. And I thought I would just leave that as an always vent, just always open for the bees to, to vent out of the hive. I didn't know how hot these hives were going to get. However, the bees completely sealed those holes up on all six hives. They completely packed them with propolis and beeswax. And that's not just like a little skim coat. That is rock solid. So they told me right in the beginning that they did not want venting at the top of the hive. So I never used these things for venting, but I did open them up for feeding. Now in the winter time, this was my major problem. This is like the Achilles heel of the whole hive. I've got all this insulation around the main hive body down here. Then I had this vent box or insulation box packed with insulation up here. So there was a lot of insulation keeping heat down, insulation on the sides. However, this rim was exposed to the outside air. And this got cold over the winter which transmitted cold into the wood here on the inner cover. And you can see what happened is condensation formed all around the outside of the inner cover. The bees kept this part of the, the inner cover warm enough with their cluster inside. So this didn't get soaking wet, but the outside of this, this whole rim got really wet and all the wood swelled up. It warped, it wasn't sitting flat on the boxes. Um, it was just a big problem. So this was a huge design flaw that I wanted to fix in version 2.0. So what did I do to fix it? Well, let's start off at the top. I hated taking off all that stuff to get into the hives on version one. So I tried to simplify the top of the hive. So I just have this Coroplast lid here and in the Coroplast lid, I have a piece of foam. So it makes it a little more rigid and it gives it a little of insulation, but this is much lighter, much easier to pop off than all those covers and lids and stuff. So first change right there. The next thing you'll see is this new insulation and feeder box. Now this, if you can see, is actually made of styrofoam. This is not wood. This is an, uh, a polystyrene box. And I routed out the inside of the lower part here, all the way around, and I put in plexiglass. So this is like an observation hive now in the winter time. I did put one hole in it here with a dial so I can still feed in the, in the fall when the bees need it. And I'm gonna pack these things with insulation. So this is also an insulation box kind of like I had over here. But as you see, there's no inner cover anymore. This is basically functioning as an inner cover, this bottom lip here with the glass. This box nests very nicely on this rim of the hive. Oh, and I don't know if you realize yet, but this isn't the only thing made of polystyrene. The entire hive is made of polystyrene. That's another pretty big design change in version 2.0. I got rid of the wood on the inside, the wooden boxes and the wooden cladding on the outside, and I went with pure foam. So we got an inch and a half of polystyrene here. This is two inches of foam on the outside three and a half inches thick all the way around. So this hive is made of 100% insulation, which I think is pretty cool. 
The reason for that was mainly because of the moisture issue. The moisture is not a bad thing for the bees. The bees handle the humidity and the moisture just fine. The, the moisture in this hive was not a problem for the bees, but it was a problem for the box. All this wood was getting totally saturated and swollen. Some of the joints were starting to come apart and nothing was fitting together. In the springtime, things were hard to get apart. So I wanted to try and find a material that didn't absorb moisture. And I went with this. So this has turned out to be a really good choice because it's also extremely lightweight. It's a lot cheaper than the, the cedar I used over here because this stuff is crazy expensive right now. Um, and it's a little bit easier for the average person to build this kind of a hive because you literally just get the hive, you get the foam, you cut it and glue it all together. All that will be coming up on my tutorial videos coming up soon. And a quick sidebar, if anyone is wondering how this foam is gonna hold up over time, I've actually been running an experiment up here for the last two seasons. These double nukes are wooden hives wrapped with one layer of two inch polystyrene. And I put the foam on them, painted it with a couple coats of paint and put them up here in the bee yard two seasons ago one whole winter, and they look just like the day I painted them. So I really think the foam is gonna be just fine on Bee Barn 2.0. So the way I'm solving the condensation problem in the hive, remember the reason for the condensation in here was because this outside edge got cold, transmitted the cold into the, the wood here, which caused all this water to, to accumulate on this part of the inner cover. So to solve for this getting cold, I put my inner cover, which is essentially the glass is the inner cover, inside an insulated box. So this is insulation here. It's, it's about an inch and a half thick. And this sits on this lip here and makes a nice tight seal. So any cold is gonna hit this, which is again insulation, before it touches the glass on the inside. This will be packed with insulation all winter. And although this is insulation, it still is gonna get cold and eventually you know, cold will get through here. So I'm putting another lid over the top of all of this and mating that lid up with this edge to keep the cold away from this box. So I'm gonna be showing you that in just a moment. Okay, let's talk about another significant difference between version one and version two. This is the bottom view of the hives. We have the inside of version one here, regular Langstroth beehive surrounded by foam, surrounded by cedar. So a box in a box in a box. This thing was meant to sit on top of a standard Langstroth bottom board. I had the mite boards installed year round, so they were always in there. They weren't open in the summer. You know, they're, they're not a tight fit, so there is some ventilation down here, but it, it did prevent a lot of wind from blow, blowing up in the hive. I didn't have any insulation on the stand or underneath the bottom board directly, but I did have insulation inside the stand. I put a piece of two inch foam up inside the bottom of the stand and it was just sort of press fit in there. And the thought was I wanted to keep sort of blowing wind and cold air from blowing up into the hive in the winter. The problem is this was never a really tight fit. So a lot of crawly things made it up into the bottom of the hives. I had a lot of ants in here and up inside here there was a lot of wax moth larva and it just was kind of messy down here in this area. So not the best solution for the bottom of the hive. Very open and just kind of messy down here. Now as you can see in version two it is nice and clean, nice and solid. So inside here is a screen bottom board. Imagine, if you will, this being attached to the hive completely on version two here. So this is attached, and then what I did is I just continued the foam around and completely sealed this in with foam. And I'm gonna show you that also in the tutorial that is coming up next. So right now, this is all continuous foam all the way around on the bottom of the hive, and the screen bottom board is inside here. Let me show you what it looks like from the back. Whoops. All right, so the back of version 1.0 had this little wooden door here. Not the best fit, but it worked. This came out right here, and then here was a little piece of foam. 
and then the mite tray would slide out here for mite inspections and clearing out debris. Now this worked for the last couple of years, but it was not very elegant and all the garbage on here would fall off into that, that foam that's, that's tucked up in the stand and then that just piled up and got messy. So, you know, this worked and it was kind of clever, but not an ideal execution of what I really wanted. So version two is a lot nicer. This door here is made of foam and it's the same foam as the back. Nice and light, easy to, to pop in and out. Inside here is a mite tray that slides right out. And this has a little, you know, it has sides, so it catches debris and mites a lot better. So this fits right into the screen bottom board that is built into the hive inside this foam. Now in the trays that I have up in the bee yard right now, I have holes drilled in the back of this tray here. And this slides in and any moisture inside the hive goes down the walls of the hive the bottom board is angled like this, and all the water goes right into that tray. Water going into the tray will go through the holes in the tray and then drip down onto this foam, which is scooped out like a bowl and painted so it's waterproof, and water just drips right out of the back of the hive like this and goes right down the back of the hive stand. So this is a much cleaner sort of way out for the water. Everything is angled backwards, and all water drips out the back of these hives. Now the hive itself is sitting on coroplast. I put a layer of coroplast over the stand. That is to protect the, the stand a little bit, but also to keep critters like, you know, ants and mice from crawling up underneath and digging their way into the foam and making homes underneath the hive. So I put the, the coroplast here as a little bit of water protection, but also, you know, rodent protection. So that is the back and the underside of the new hives. All right, one other major change between version one and version two is the size of the brood box. As you know, the last couple of years, I've had eight frame Langstroth boxes. These are a deep and a medium box stacked on top of each other with my 16 inch deep, extra deep frames that go all the way down to the bottom of the hive. Now, this is an eight frame box, but I only ever kept seven frames in here. And the reason is because I had these spacers on either side, keeping the frame centered. But what I did during inspections was I'd pull out a spacer first to make room so that I could easily pull out one of my very deep frames from the bottom of the hive. This is not a deep frame, but you get the idea. So I wanted to leave a spacer in there so I could easily get frames out. So I only ever had seven frames, which worked great about 11 months of the year. But in May of this year, what happened was my bees built up so rapidly, they ran out of room in the brood box. I had a super on top, I had empty frames in here, and they still swarmed. I had four hives swarm this spring because the brood box just was not big enough, and I couldn't make it any bigger in the moment. So I wanted to plan for that in version two. So I found a company that made a nine frame brood box. They do make a 10 frame box, but it doesn't have this awesome lip on the top that nests all the boxes together. So I went with the nine frame version, which is still a lot bigger than this. So this is gonna be sort of the winter configuration with a spacer in here because the bees only need seven frames to get through winter. They don't need a nine frame extra deep cluster size for winter time. Seven frames is plenty for all my bees up there and this is how they are right now up in the bee yard. In May, when things start to brood up really quickly, I'm gonna remove the spacer, and then I can add two whole frames in here and still have a little wiggle room because this is a little bit bigger than nine frames. So I can have two more frames in here, which is a lot more space than what this was. So I'm really looking forward to this spring and watching the buildup go and being able to expand now into a much bigger brood box. All right, the last part of the video, I just wanna share with you the couple special things that I've added to version two that were not in version one. I already gave away the clear cover, but I wanna explain exactly what it is and why I did it. Last year, when the winter was winding down and I didn't know how much food was in my hives and I didn't know really how big my clusters were, how many bees were, were surviving in the, in the colonies. I do have brood minders in all my hives, so I knew there was heat being generated. I knew there were some bees, I didn't know how many. And I also didn't know if they were running low on food. So in late February, I went up and I cracked open the lids 
and I peeked inside for like 10 seconds and people went nuts in the comments. But I really just wanted to see how big the cluster was and as soon as I saw capped honey on the frames, I immediately closed them right back up. So I knew that they could make it through, you know, until it got warmer. But I don't like doing that. But sometimes you need to look and see. You just, because you don't want to have your bees starve. So you need to crack that lid. And I wanted to solve that problem. So I made this. So now, as opposed to going up to your hive in the middle of the winter to crack the lid to see how the bees are doing and check stores, all you need to do is walk up and lift a cover off and you can see directly into your hive and check your bees with no disturbance, with no, they don't even know you're there. It's like magic, it's so nice. So you can check your honey stores by looking down in between the frames. You can see if you have capped honey, they're probably fine. You can check cluster size and with the broodminder sensor that's in, in all of my hives, I know how they're keeping the temperature and humidity in there. So it's just a really nice system. And if you remember, I showed you these special boxes have a nice lip that nests with the lower lip. So it's really a secure fit. And it's, it's like a dream to be able to look in there in the middle of the winter. So in the tutorial video coming up, part three of the tutorials, I'm gonna show you how I made this and also the final piece of this winter puzzle. We have been down in the like 30s Fahrenheit for the last month or so. The bees have been in these boxes since the first week of October, so about a month and a half. And it hasn't really been that cold, like we haven't really hit freezing yet. It's been a mild fall. But right now we are in the 20s outside and we're gonna be dipping down even lower than that. Highs in the 40s, so it's time to really put the winter lids on these things. Again, the weak link of this design is that this can get cold which then draws the cold into the plexiglass and causes possible moisture in there. So what I'm gonna do is take this cover off and replace it with this. Now this is two inch polystyrene and this is gonna go outside over the top of this. These angles here made up with these angles here. So it's a really easy fit. All I'm gonna do is drop it on top and that fits really nice and secure. I'm gonna strap that down so it doesn't blow away, of course, but that's all I'm gonna do for winter prep. Now the idea here, again, is to just keep that inner box as warm as possible so that we don't get that condensation on the plexiglass inside the hive. This box does not actually touch the box inside. There is an air gap. This area here is about an inch larger than the dimensions of this box. So there's like a half inch air gap all the way around this thing here. So we have a thermal break so we don't have that thermal bridge to this box. So this goes on here and these hives are done. They are ready for winter and I think the bees are gonna be perfectly comfortable this winter with no moisture issues or minimal moisture issues. The bees do need a little water in the winter so it's fine if there's some moisture in the hive but nothing like last year. So this is the final design. I am going to be releasing four videos. There will be a video on how I wrap the main hive and you don't have to use polystyrene on the inside. I'm gonna show you how you can do this with a wooden hive as well. So the first video is gonna be about this part. The second video is gonna talk about how I made my stands for the hive for these things to sit on. The third video is gonna talk about the plexiglass box, and this outer box here. And the fourth video is gonna go over how I make my frames. And you are definitely gonna to wanna to watch the frame video because it is very exciting. And there might be a surprise in that video. So stay tuned, please subscribe. And there's gonna be a lot more content coming out of Vino Farm in the next several weeks. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you like my new hive. All right, you guys wanna see me open up the hive on a 40 degree day Fahrenheit? Look at that. I would say those bees are pretty chill. And by chill, I mean just hanging. There's a tiny bit of condensation in the corners here. So the bees are congregated here. They're keeping this part of the glass warm. But this over here is a cold spot and you can see a little water in the sides. But the whole front corner here is, is totally warm. 
and they're just hanging out undisturbed. So I love the glass top. And now this cover just goes over the entire box up here and sits nice and snug. And that will keep that entire box warm now. And a couple of little plastic strain relievers here for the foam so I don't rip the foam. Snug. And those bees are ready for winter. I don't have to open this until March, but I can come up here whenever I want, pop this lid off, peel the burlap back and see right inside the hive. Check stores, check wellness. This is the way. This is the way.